some of it will be probably some of the best graffiti wall art you'll ever see. What? Come on. LA? New York. New York? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think they had the attention to detail. The majority of what's going on in there is punk kids. They're there were talented guys. punk kids. We are headed out to go to the tunnels, and who's excited? Woo! The boys are normally out on everything that we recommend, and then when we get there, they're like, that was really cool. That so wasn't bad. We'll it see goes if, from not bad to really cool. Yeah, so we'll so. see if that is the case today. I think the tunnels are gonna be a lot of fun. They wanna go back to Chimney. They've been waiting to go back to the chimney. If we have time, after the tunnels, we're gonna drive to the East Shore. If we have time, no, we are making We're going time. to. Uh, real so. quick, we're going to take the road around the Donner Lake, uh, the old Donner Highway, up over a beautiful bridge. And then we're gonna park up at the top of the old Donner Highway, and we're gonna park in this big parking lot, and then we're gonna walk up to the train tunnels. So, uh, big parking let, let us show you. <laughs> I feel like I'm telling a ghost story, but this is the only way I can get enough light in here to tell you. So um, already this has been really cool. It's absolutely fascinating. And uh, we already have a tip, at least I already have a tip. Bring a long sleeve shirt or a jacket because as soon as you approach the tunnel, it starts getting chilly, but it's crazy. The graffiti is actually really cool, but I'll tell you something that's naturally even better than the graffiti and that is the the marks that the weather has put on the concrete bunker, if you will, the tunnel. The top is just fascinating. What it's done is it's kind of like marbleized the concrete. But anyway, bring a light, bring some warm clothes, and bring a lunch, because I have a feeling this goes really far back. Look at that graffiti behind me. That person's very good with spray paint. So it looks as though that the graffiti was painted over black, gray, and tan at one point. So it seems like the state or the county had come out here and they've painted up to that line on three different occasions, just what I'm speculating. And just like the gum wall in San Francisco, it probably didn't take long before all this graffiti came back. And I'll tell you, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of graffiti, but this graffiti is so good. I mean, look at this stuff behind me. It's crazy. And then you've got the light reflecting in from like these right here like this. And so it's just like the perfect art gallery. When do you think the, the most opportune oh, time is to come in graffiti? Midnight. Yeah. You should think about how creepy this area would be at night. <laughs> really bad. Yeah. 
think that it's funny that the darker you get, the more profane and like gross it is. And then in the light, when it opens up, it's like, love. <laughs> it's like a beautiful woman, you know, like, it's really funny. They're like, okay, maybe here, I'll do something nice. <laughs> and, then, and then in the dark, when you get really dark, like pitch black, you just see a bunch of pictures of cats and it's really creepy. And we enter back into the dark tunnel. All right, let us share with you some information about these train tunnels, which I think was pretty cool. Yeah, definitely worth a little visit. In, uh, easy hike, by the way. Yes. Easy hike, easy parking, easy to find. Mm -hmm. All right, but it's super cool. Let's, let's share some of these dates we just found. Well, I think we have the Chinese immigrants to thank for mm -hmm. these tunnels, and this is the first pass-through of the Sierra. Sierra Nevada. It was the first train tracks to traverse the Sierra Nevada range. Yes, I mean, that's a huge feat. Oh my gosh, yeah. So anyway. and it was And it was basically built entirely by Chinese immigrant workers. Yes. And it took them 15 months to do. And, mm -hmm. when, and under when, a year later, they were already bringing trains through here. When was the first train? The tunnel was completed in 1867, and in under a year, there were trains going through here with cargo. When you walk through here, you will be amazed that anyone would be able to make this in 15 months. Yes. And so then the train started going through and then the last train came through in 1993. Well, it's a great hike and it gets cooler inside there. So on a hot yes. day, if you're looking for a little shelter, you can go through here. Sure. And then uh, if you look up the real the real path, you can be gone for, I think it's like a five mile hike total. Yeah. And there's what they call the Chinese wall. Mm -hmm. And it was bringing one passage to the next passage and they built this system, ramping the train up or bringing it down. And they mm -hmm. call it the great, the great Chinese wall. So over in Kings Beach, there's a little public uh, public grass area, state park, beach, that kind of thing. We used to come here with Tori a long time ago and get a picture like this, right? Mm -hmm. So Tori wants to go stand inside of it and get another picture. Recreate the picture. Let's go recreate. Okay, now we have to go through the long and arduous process okay, you gotta take a few more. Tori looking and reviewing the pictures and then telling me everything I did wrong and, and then taking take more, more pictures. Like, more, more. Like, yes. hit that button as many times as you can. Yes, yes. It's as just if these now. phones have unlit. <laughs> start now. Well, just hold I, it down as you just, hop up No, there. just don't hold it. Just tap it along. Just tap it along. All right, yeah. I'm tapping, tapping, tapping. Gonna look at him again. That, my friends, is how you take a picture for a teenager, a Woo! teenage girl. That is how you do it. I am a fan. Let me tell you something. You would not ever want to do that with any adult's phone ever. But when you're a teenager, actually, you... I've met a few adults and I do that, and they're like, "Wow, thank you so much. You gave me so many options." <laughs> I would say cheers, but Mark needs to catch up. Oh, here, here. I'll give you some. No, no, that's okay. So we thought we'd give you a few Tahoe tips. If you come here, there are so many things to do. You Maybe. need like a list of like 30 things and then weed it down to what your interests are. Yeah, so right? here's what we thought we would do. We thought we would first share with you kind of an out, an overview of Lake Tahoe, kind of help kind you of get your... Like, it's like this. Yeah. We'll put a picture up. And then some things to do, some things to do that we, we know we've done in the past that we just didn't do this trip. Yes. Okay, so first of all, uh, Tahoe really kind of has like three or four sections. Then you've got the South Lake, which is the Nevada side. That's where like Heavenly Valley Ski Resort is. That's where all the casinos are. That's usually kind of the party scene. And then uh, and then you have North Lake Tahoe, which is kind of like your more quintessential ski town. You've got Squaw Valley, you've got Alpine Meadows. And then you've got State Line, which is, uh, it kind of separates California and Nevada. That's where like the casinos are and uh, you got the Hyatt Regency down there. You got Incline Village. You've got Billionaires Row. They call it Billionaires Row. Okay, because the billionaires bought out the millionaires. They took their beautiful houses, leveled them, wait, and wait, then wait, wait, built they took, even bigger houses. That means people literally leveled a ten. They bought a home, a lakefront home, for ten million dollars, and then they tore it down. 
to build their house. So what we like to do, because they haven't gated it yet, which I don't understand why they haven't mm -hmm. yet, but they haven't gated it. So one of our favorite things to do is to go for a drive through it. Yeah. And we see like all the new houses springing Massive. up and yeah. it's just so gorgeous. I can only imagine what they look like inside. Yes. yes. So it's just a fun pastime if you're driving through there to drive down the street and kind of yeah. see what that's all like. All right, so let's talk about things to do in Lake Tahoe. There's a beautiful gondola ride uh, that you can go to the top of Squaw Valley. Ooh. And up at the top of Squaw Valley, it's kind of like the top of like Whistler and other big ski resorts like that, is that there's... But you can hike up there, you could, or you could take the gondola. You could, you could hike up Shirley Lake Hike all the way to the top of Squaw Valley, and then take the gondola down for free. And Isn't then when that you're, cool? And then when you're up there, you can grab some lunch, you can go ice skating, and you kind of hang out on top because there's a whole scene up there. Yes. Okay, so there's that to do, which we might still do. Yeah, or you can do half of Shirley, which we've done so many times. Yeah. Even little kids love it. And uh, if you're here in the middle of the summer when there's plenty of water coming down, mm -hmm. you can see all these waterfalls. Beautiful. It's really pretty. And just pack a lunch. And then speaking of hikes, uh, we showed you uh, Emerald Bay, which is where that little tea house was on the island. Mm -hmm. In that same area, there's another hike called Eagle, I don't know if it's Eagle Lake Hike or Eagle Creek Hike, that's another beautiful hike. So you could hike up and you can overlook Emerald Bay, which is fantastic. Yes. All right, let's talk about other things. Mountain biking. The Flume Trail oh, is perhaps so many mountain the most biking. beautiful trail. It's like the most infamous trail in Lake Tahoe to be to mountain bike. It's literally, you get this huge view of Lake Tahoe. So if you're a mountain biker, Would you've you got to hit the Flume Trail. Would you say it's advanced? No, I'd say it's intermediate to advanced. Intermediate to advanced. Beautiful views. You can also hike it. Okay, then there is, uh, then if you're in Tahoe City, you can go parasailing. There's a company down mm -hmm. there that will take you out parasailing. I think it's like $85, $90 a ride. You could even go like two or three people per mm -hmm. parachute. Oh, I think that'd be really cool too to see the lake from up high because you can yeah. see through this yeah. lake. It is so beautiful. Yeah. Amazing. So it would give you a really great elevated experience. Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about places to eat, right? Two of the most famous places to eat here, maybe three, are Sunnyside's and Jake's. Jake's on the lake is in Tahoe City, and Sunnyside is a little bit more on the west shore. We still, you and I should hit Sunnyside before we leave. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then you've got Jake's. Uh, if you go to Jake's you, or Sunnyside, you need to hit their hula pie. The hula pie is a TS famous Ooh. ice cream wedge. Yes, you're a sweets guy, I'm a savory gal. Mm -hmm. So I like the deep fried uh, zucchini. Oh yeah, if you go to Sunnyside, get the deep fried zucchini and the hula pie. Oh my gosh, and you sit outside and you watch people because people come in on their boats and it's super yeah. fun. But one of my favorite places to grab a drink is Garwoods. They have mm -hmm. what's called the Woody, and it's like a tropical drink that you are like dying for. It's amazing. Now the dining is more high end. It's a little expensive. So if you want that experience, that's great, but if you just want to go for the atmosphere, I think it's fun to go like around happy hour when it starts getting busy mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. super fun and get a little Woody and then sit outside and see the boats come yeah. and go. It's really fun. Right across the street from Sunnyside's is a place to have breakfast. I was just gonna ask you that. Where is that breakfast place? Fire Sign Cafe. Absolutely so the best breakfast you're gonna have in Lake Tahoe. Like French toast that's like this big. And yeah, I mean, absolutely oh my delicious, so check that out. So You're gonna wait a little while though, so just be ready for yeah. that. How about floating down the Truckee River? This is something that a lot of people do. We didn't do because it's in it's September now, and so it's... It, it, the rapids are really getting slow. But if you're out here in like June and July, it's a little bit faster, but even if it's slow, it's fun to do. Yeah, it doesn't matter, especially if you're with a large group and everybody yeah. has all these different opinions on where we should go and what we should do. Get a couple rafts, mm -hmm. go down the river. Or you can rent a couple rafts. You can you can float yes. down to River Ranch, which is the which is where Alpine Meadows is, and then just get on the bus, and it'll take you right back to your car. Yeah, so you can either rent, and but that's like around forty five dollars a person, or you could just go buy your own rafts yeah. at at Rite Aid, and they have little rafts mm -hmm. for like twenty dollars with mm -hmm. paddles and the yeah. whole thing, and you can go down all by yourself. So it's like any float raft, you know what to expect. Yeah, so. it's super fun, but then you end up at River Ranch, which is a great little restaurant during the day. You can get hot dogs, hamburgers. They call your name out of a num out of the yeah. you know window, whatever. River Ranch but is good. nighttime, it turns into a very formal, nice restaurant. So if you look up, hey, how much is it to go eat there? Yeah. If nighttime, it's very expensive. In the afternoon, it's great. Or, and if you don't want to go down the Truckee River, you could just ride your bike. There's a bike path around the whole Truckee River from Tahoe City down to River Ranch. It's a beautiful bike lane, two lanes, and it goes right next to the river. Absolutely must do if you're looking for a great ride. And you can rent bikes anywhere. So if your car isn't equipped to bring bikes here, 
rent a bike, it will yep. be a great yep. day for you. Yep. We're parasailing, mountain biking, hiking. Uh, there's someone, a subscriber said, hey, don't forget there's a catamaran over at the Hyatt, so if you wanna go out Ooh. on the lake, you can go grab the Hyatt. Yeah. A couple other things to do. If you're into the history of Lake Tahoe, the Thunderbird, which is the beautiful wood boat, is, is here. Um, that gets a little pricey if you want, and by pricey, I mean like five to 10 grand, if you want to go out on a, on a dinner cruise. But the Thunderbird Lodge, yes. I think is like a 35 to $40 ticket. And, and you, you can, get a tour through all of the Thunderbird and the history. Yeah. That's one thing that has struck Mark and I is the history that surrounds Lake Tahoe. Yeah. Literally, at every shore, there's a story. And so if you do a mm -hmm. little research, you're gonna find that you are like in the footprints of just Crazy cool. Let's history. face it, this place has been beautiful since the beginning. This is not a damned lake. So I've been attractive to a lot of people for a long time. Yeah, and as a result, there's just like some crazy mansions and like going back into the like the twenties and before. So yes. So if that kind of stuff interests you, you should look up all the history mm -hmm. and then you can go and visit those places and it just makes it even more fun because your experience will have just a little depth to yeah. it. Yeah. Right? But whatever you do. Take time to just stop by the water, listen to the waves, mm -hmm. and enjoy yourself because Beautiful. you are going to make some memories here and they are going to be deeply ingrained in your mind because it is so gorgeous. It's stimulating in every part. Yeah. Right? Visually, it, it, really is. it smells beautiful. Nothing it's, smells as good as Tahoe, period. It's the great. End. And get, you have an awesome time in Tahoe. Yes. All right, let's get back to doing what we were doing before. What were we doing before? Just sitting here. <laughs> and we're doing it. And we're doing it. morning from the trailhead of Shirley Lake hike. The plan was to come to Squaw Valley at the Shirley Canyon Trail, mm -hmm. hike up along the waterfalls, go all the way to the top and take the gondola down to Squaw Valley. That was the plan. It's a three and a half mile hike one way and it's mm -hmm. gorgeous. Absolutely agree. You go up to you go up through the waterfalls, then you get to Shirley Lake and then from Shirley Lake you just go up this little steep to, uh, climb and you get to the top. Free gondola ride down because there's right. no tickets. They don't stamp your tickets. Free down. Well, we get here and the sign says, the tram schedule says, daily through September 4th. <laughs> Today is September 5th. So that um, means we're just gonna go on a little mini hike, yeah. have some lunch, and then these guys get what they want because we'll go to Chimney Beach yeah. even sooner. Okay, something that we have not once ever talked about is geocaching. And I don't know if anyone out there geocaches, but basically the super short version is there are little Easter eggs hidden all around the world. And there's this app where you can go look for the coordinates. And when you find the coordinates, they usually give you a little hint. It's like a scavenger hunt. And the hint would not be completely obvious, so it would be like kind of a riddle. And then that would give you kind of a clue as to where the little geocache would be. So. Caleb is looking for a geocache on the Shirley Canyon hike. And what are we looking for? Such an awesome geocache. Lots of cool little trinkets in a beautiful part of the trail right on. Wait, wow. look at the photos. Ooh, it's, okay, so, oh, it's now in a plastic box. Oh, okay. And, and, the, and it says it's right here around this well, throne? Well, it says by the throne. There's so by no the throne, thing. and we think that's the throne because it looks like Tori's sitting oh, in it. Oh, Tori's sitting in it, but we think that's the throne. Okay. And so it says it's near the throne. And then it says there's a little plastic box around here and then inside are a bunch of trinkets. And then the way that geocaching works is whatever you take out of the cache, you would replace it with something equivalent value. So let's go look for this thing. So if it gets really hard to find, then you can start looking at the spoiler alerts from the other people that have found it. Sometimes people will put like, really good clues as to how to find it. And so if it gets really tough, sometimes we'll do that. I'm Big Girls and I'll show you how to geocache. Spotted it. And the reason I spotted it is because Trish found a picture where she showed us the size of the box and it was actually a pretty big box. Then you gotta ask yourself, if you were hiding this box this size, where would you hide it? It had to be in a pretty big spot. Wait, so come look at this. We can't show them, otherwise it's a spoiler alert. No, it's all right. Can I open it, please, yeah. please, please? 
Yeah! Here. Ooh, there's a piece of tied gum. Okay, so we found the little, we found the cache, and basically you can see some of the things that people have had on them that they traded, but we have something that we think is particularly cool. We're putting two Keeper Daydream stickers in here. So if you're in Lake Tahoe and you want a Keeper Daydream sticker, the name of this cache is... We'll surely never forget. You'll surely never forget. And it's on the Shirley Canyon hike. So download the geocache app and go find this cache and you've got yourself a KYD sticker or a couple KYD cards. Geocache found, that really is a lot of fun. So. Go check it out if that's something you want to do with your kids, your family, your grandkids. It's kind of a cool event. Chimney Beach. You want to see me cliff jump? Again. They want to go cliff jumping. Oh, great. Trisha is back there. Got a cute little setup on the beach. Dad, and then we've got go. this gorgeous blue water. So, let us show you around Chimney Beach. You can see how quickly things change in the Sierras. Did you get your tan on? I did for like 15 minutes. And then the lightning struck. And then the lightning struck. <laughs> so it was time to deflate the unicorn. <laughs> unicorn, get those unicorns and flamingos in right now. In right now. Yeah, anyway, it is crazy, crazy raining right now. And like the rain in the Sierras is like, the each drops. drop is like, each drop is like this big, it's crazy. Anyhow, so I guess we're packing up and we're gonna get out of here, but you know what, it was fun. It was. It was fun. We got to see a lot today. We did, we got to see a lot. And I guess uh, that's what happens when you leave at like nine. Nine in the morning? You get to use the entire day. <laughs> All right, oh. what are you looking for? My goggles, I know they're broken, but get them. <laughs> Okay, well now, what are we gonna do? Uh, well I have some letters to write. Oh, you do, yes. okay. And we need to start surfing through some footage. Okay. And then maybe you and I and Winnie will just go over, or, and Tori will just go oh. over to Winnie's. That's a good idea. Yeah, because I have stuff to make for dinner. This is our final good morning from, from the beautiful Lake Tahoe. Tahoe. And like we yes. really hope you enjoyed the videos that and the things we did here, and the little Q and A that we did. Not the Q and A, but like the little a Tahoe suggestion session. Suggestions, because there's really so much more to do. Hey, at least you know that if you come to Tahoe and follow our itinerary, mm -hmm. you can do the whole thing for free. Because <laughs> we hung out at beaches, we yeah. hung out at, we went for hikes, all of that. But Sunnyside was not free. And Sunnyside was not but free. But it was very good, and I definitely think it's worth doing. Yes. Like, so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna head down into Levining, just outside of Yosemite, and we're gonna hope to, we're, we're, we're gonna try to do Yosemite in one day. Okay, so season three, we're on our last couple little stops on season three. We we're gonna go through Yosemite right now, and we are hoping and praying that it is nice enough for you mm -hmm. to be able to see it, mm -hmm. and the fires aren't just totally ravishing yeah. the area. So anyway, but I know we'll be able to see the falls tomorrow. We'll mm -hmm. see the valley floor. We'll take you to the historic Awani Hotel, which is now the Majestic. Yep. And, um, and then we'll head on down towards Arizona. We're gonna go home and uh, season three is coming to an end, but that's okay because season four is right around the corner and I'm sure there's gonna be a video coming up real soon as to what season four, what the theme of season four is. So we look forward to sharing that with you soon. And other than that, we will see you right here this time next weekend. Oh, wait, wait, can I say goodbye? Yeah. Goodbye, my 
sorry, saucy people.